Hello again. Um, this is going to be a quite long-winded um, series of videos about power flushing and system corrosion. Now this is a huge problem in the industry and especially concerning low water content boilers and in particular modern condensing boilers with the heat exchangers that they use. Now power flushing is quite a laborious uh, process. It's long and can be quite messy at times which is just one of those things unfortunately however it is a necessary evil it's something that every heating system and modern condensing boiler requires without a shadow of a doubt your heating system water needs to be as clean and as immaculate as possible as close to drinking water quality as possible so because this is such a monstrous mammoth topic i'm just going to do a series of short videos try and break it up and do it in stages uh, so that you don't get bored and uh, I don't run out of battery on the camera. So, first thing we're going to look at is the actual corrosion process itself and why it happens and where it comes from. Now, if you put oxygenated water in contact with ferrous metals, the oxygen, the water and the metals and the iron will react and cause corrosion, cause corrosion. and this is a big problem, especially as soon as your heating system is made up of uh, a multiple of different types of metals which will then create different types of corro corrosion. Now I could go into sort of quite gets quite scientific about the different types of corrosion but we'll just call it rust and corrosion for the time being it just keeps things simple but there are various types of corrosion that can take place inside your heating system. Now my esteemed colleague Mr Christopher Watkins who's a walking encyclopedia on um, plumbing and heating made up some jars some time ago so that we could visually show the apprentices and plumbers that come into the college for training purposes um, the actual effects of water and corrosion um, and this these three samples basically um, we made up of different types of metal um, and left them over different periods of time but the worrying thing is is that all the corrosion level in these has taken place in the space of three weeks so and we've only used one lot of water per jar so we haven't replaced or replenished the water supply in any way whatsoever which is something I'm going to come back to a bit in a, in a minute or a bit later on now we're going to take if we look at this jar for instance in here we have a selection of metals and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see through the jar and you'll see that the corrosion is built up and settled at the bottom there now, ordinarily the water looks quite clear but obviously if that's in your heating system and you put your boiler on to bring on your heating the pump will activate and it will start rocketing water around your heating and radiators very quickly indeed and then what happens is this and your heating system will turn into that now if that's in your water or in the heating system water at some point or another it is going to have to pass through your boiler and go back out to the radiators and come back again to get reheated which means all that is going to go into this now a two thousand pound boiler give or take with installation costs and especially being a condensing boiler they are not designed to work with this sort of stuff floating around inside of them in fact this will absolutely destroy that in a very short period of time indeed and to give you some idea, we'll have a little look at some heat exchangers that I've got here. And we'll have to show you a bit more. Now this is a main heat exchanger out of an Ecotec boiler, which is this boiler here. And this is the main part of the heat exchanger where you've got uh, tubular steel running round and round and round inside of there. Which is where the water is being pumped round and round and round and the, back, the gas is being burnt in here. And that's what transfers the heat into the water. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. You think, well, okay, fair enough, it goes in, it comes out. Well, no. And the thing is, because my other esteemed colleague, Mr. Joseph Surrey, who is an absolute genius when it comes to things like machinery and stuff like that, and he's got a fantastic workshop, which is, he should pay door entry for that workshop. It is an absolute masterpiece. Anyway, he does all sorts of weird and wonderful things in his spare time, one of which he likes to take things apart. So, this is what we've done, or what Joe has done, is you can see he's actually cut the heat exchanger open so we can see actually what's going on inside now the eye-opening thing about this is is that it's not a singular tube it's a manifold of tubes in and out 
and as you can see the ports coming in there are quite thick probably about 20 mil but immediately they reduce down to maybe I don't know three or four mil so the tubes aren't actually tubular they're over ovular ovulated so they're slightly oval like this and they're very very narrow which means that if you start pumping all sorts of corrosion and lumps of rust and steel and magnetite from your radiators like this and it goes into here it will block it up fairly quickly and as you can see here I don't know hopefully you'll be able to see the color of that where Joe's basically removed the manifold cover here so you can actually see where the pipes go in and they are pretty much chock-a-block with corrosion from a heating system now you might think well okay sure it'd be easy to pump it out or clean it well the answer to that is no it's not um, very difficult to clear and very difficult to clean indeed and now generally speaking if the heat exchanger gets into that sort of condition you're looking at writing the boiler off because these little babies are anything from 400 to six or 700 pounds just to purchase so if this gets blocked up you pretty much say kiss goodbye it's all over get rid of your boiler it's a write-off so very important that you do not put anything into this that shouldn't be in there alternatively before this one blocks up on most boilers anyway you have another type of heat exchanger which is a domestic plate which I can show you here and you can see the domestic plate heat exchanger here at the back of the boiler and this one we've actually cut in half so you can actually see inside now you may not be able to see that on the camera because obviously um, it's not a brilliant camera but it does the job but the waterways here are where the water is being pumped through the plate heat exchanger are at best I would say three millimeters in uh, the distance of the gap in between where the water's got to be pumped through and you've got lots and lots of layers of three millimeter gaps to pump water through now again if you take a load of this and start pumping it through this this will block up unbelievably quickly and what happens when this starts to block up is the boiler can't push the heat through it the boiler gets hot very quickly the boiler then modulates down because it can't get rid of the heat and then your hot water temperature starts to fluctuate up and down where the boiler is coming on off on off because it's trying to push the heat through this inside the boiler so corrosion very very bad news so it's imperative that we keep the heating system clean now the biggest or the worst enemy of this type of boiler is oxygenated water this amount of corrosion was created in less than three weeks bearing in mind we have not changed this water it's the same water we put in from day one and it's created that much corrosion therefore can you imagine the accumulative damage or amounts of corrosion that would be produced if we had a continuous fresh supply of fresh water going into this jar so you can imagine the damage that would be done in a very short period of time a matter of weeks or possibly months not years so this will really really wreck your boiler incredibly quickly now obviously if you've got this problem you need to address or find out where that oxygenated water is coming from and what has created the, uh, the corrosion in the first place now this could be something like the filling loop mechanism has been left turned on or it hasn't been turned off properly or it could be the internal mechanism on the boilers but uh, the filling loop valves are letting by or they haven't been turned off properly the pressure will then go sky high the boiler will continue working but what you won't see or you may not see is the discharge pipe work on the boiler where it's going to release any excessive pressure will continuously drip to outside which you probably won't see and the boiler will continuously fill up with fresh water from your filling loop because it's been left turned on now this can be absolutely catastrophic for your boiler so over pressure in the boiler or continually filling it up with fresh water will destroy it in a very short period of time so corrosion very bad different types of corrosion well this one here you can see we've only got steel nails in here we haven't got a com combination of metals we've just got steel nails if I do that as you can see slightly different color different type of corrosion but again 
about a centimetre of sludge in the bottom of that jar produced in three to four weeks this particular jar was three to four weeks again one lot of water we haven't replenished the water in that one and this one is actually a sample that we've taken out of a boiler that we took off the wall because it was wrecked and that was a sample of the water that came out of the heating system as you can see not a particularly pleasant color but this is more of a black so this has got more magnetite so there you go that's what causes the problem that's what does the damage this baby will cost you a new boiler a block plate heat exchanger you may be able to rescue generally speaking this is something to be avoided at all costs you need to keep your system immaculately clean at all times for as long as possible for the period of the, the, the lifetime of the boiler and ideally this needs to be carried out before your new condensing boiler is installed to an existing heating system now if you've got a system that has this, this problem has been created after the event then power flushing is your next port of call so the next video we could have a little chat about the power flushing so we'll see you then thanks for watching